have? It's a fun place. I have a lot of fun memories about my time in rehab. The first thing that happened when I got there, uh, I was waiting in line to check in, and someone by the name of Jesus, a thicker Mexican man, walked up to me and was like, hey man, are you here for rehab? I was looking around like, are there other events going on here that I'm not aware of? Like, am I going to accidentally walk in on like some sex addicts anonymous meeting or something? Like, hey guys, sorry, I'm like, oh, oh, God, God, I'll just leave you to it. She's going to rain my eye. Fuck. <laughs> now, right after you check in, they have you do a blackout week, which is basically a week of detoxing. The first two days were pretty good, you know, my family hooked me up with some activity books, I had my bass guitar, a uh, nice bed, it wasn't too bad, very peaceful. Uh, then my first roommate came in. We'll call this guy Zach. Now, Zach was a tweaker. I mean, like, full blown. And he only lasted about three days into the detox, all of which he spent walking around the room like, I gotta get out of here, I gotta get out of here. Which isn't the best quality in a roommate that you're with 24-7. You can't leave the room, but, you know, I managed. Uh, during the blackout period, they have a, a rule where you can't um, call anyone. You can't call your family. And this is to keep you in for the detox, you know. Uh, but the exception to that rule is you can call your children. So, Zach would call his kid, put his wife on the phone, and scream, You gotta get me out of here! Until they take the phone away from him. And then she did. <sighs> After she left, I had like two or three more peaceful days by myself before I moved upstairs with the rest of the addicts. And uh, that's when it got more interesting, you know? It's got to meet a lot of cool people, like a 60-something-year-old meth head named Gary. Now, I love Gary. Gary was great, but she had been there for over 50 days waiting for a halfway house to open up. And uh, he was cracking. <laughs> The, uh, the other guys like to make a lot of jokes just to pass the time, you know, make stupid jokes. They called watching the squirrels through their window, watching the squirrel channel. And uh, they would feed them like protein powder and cafeteria food, you know. <laughs> and every day they would come downstairs and be like, dude, are you seeing how big these squirrels are getting? Oh my god, dude, I swear ever since we've been giving them the protein powder, the lads are just huge. I've seen doing push-ups out there. Just every day talking about fucking squirrels. And, you know, it comes and goes. It's funny that it's not. But <sighs> Gary, he did not like the squirrel talk. It was getting to him. I remember like 12 days in, I heard someone make a stupid fucking squirrel joke and he just like turns to himself and says with pure hatred, if I should one more goddamn thing about the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not much to do in rehab except for laugh and, you know, rehabilitate. I somehow managed to sneak my vape in, which was pretty cool. You know, full tank and everything. When I was in the office, the guy was like, turn out your pockets, and I took out my phone and my wallet, but I didn't take out my vape, which was pretty cool. But I made the mistake of telling a couple people that I had my vape on me. <laughs> and if there's one thing you don't want to tell an addict in a rehab, it's that you have nicotine. Every fucking five minutes, I swear to God. I mean, I'm in there trying to get, like, meaning, you know? I'm trying to find spirituality, a higher power, something to connect to, you know? And every time, as soon as I'm finally getting into the book, I'm reading it, I'm just like, you know, maybe there is something else to life. Let's see what's on this next page. I just hear, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Can I get that? <laughs> Fuck it. There is no God. Just take my name. <laughs> of all the things that I learned in rehab, it's that I'm an addict. And that doesn't just mean for like drugs and alcohol. It's like food, entertainment, masturbation, everything. I just got dopamine buttons in my brain and pushing them all day long. I gotta watch out for it. Let me give you guys an example. Has anybody here been to Big River Pizza down the street? It's fucking delicious. You guys are missing out. It is some of the best pizza I've had. And they have a, a nice little parking spot in front of the window where you eat your pizza. I guess so you can like watch your car while you're eating your pizza or something. Not really sure. But uh, one of the many days that I went there to get some pizza was by the slice. And that's my favorite way to eat pizza, by the way, is by the slice, you know. Not too much commitment. And uh, I walked in and the guy was like, by the way, we're having a little uh, dealio today. If you buy one slice of pizza, you get the second one free. Now, 
I wasn't hungry for two slices of pizza, but I wasn't going to let that get in the way of a good deal. So I was like, load it up. Let me get the two slices. Took them back to my car, and I'm sitting there, and these fucking slices, they, they are good. I mean, just some of the best good pizza I've ever eaten in my life. And it's so good that I can't move this mic stand. That's how good it is. It's so good that I'm just sitting in my car, double-handing it, you know, just one in each pepperoni and one cheese in the other, you know, wiping grease off my face, you know, just puddles of it, I'm blabbing it back into my vein, and, and I look through the window that I mentioned earlier, and I see two ladies, middle-aged, enjoying a slice of pizza. And one of them is like looking up and away, you know, like trying not to look at me. But the other one, uh, she looked at me. And we made eye contact. And she like immediately like looked away and everything. And I realized how different of an experience I was having versus these two ladies, you know. Like they came here to catch up, you know, maybe talk about their children, you know, grab a nice bite of pizza, and I'm here to get my fix, you know. Ruining their fucking lovely little day, they're talking about their stuff, and I'm just like, they're trying not to look at me as I'm tying off from my front seat, like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Alright, that's all my time. Uh, thank you guys so much. Woo!